Okay, now we move to uh, solving problems in the chapter of supply and demand theory. Uh, the first chapter, uh, of course, as you can see, problem number one, given the following market data for Venus automobiles, uh, the demand, of course, is given by this formula, 80,000 minus 4P, and the supply is given by this formula, 10P minus 130,000. Find the equivalent quantity and the price. At the price of 18,000, will there be a shortage or a surplus? How much is it? What is the quantity traded? Will the price remain at 18,000? Okay. First, part A, find the equilibrium quantity and the price. So to find the equilibrium quantity and the price, we set the quantity demand equal to quantity supply. We said the quantity demanded equal the quantity supply. So this is the quantity demanded, 80,000, uh, you know, the demand, 80,000 minus 4B equal, as you can see, 10 p minus 130,000. And so, as you can see, in uh, when we set them equal to each other, we have only one variable to be, you know, calculated, which is the price. So, you know, uh, of course, simplifying the formula here, the equation, we come up with P equal 15,000. So this is, this is the equilibrium price. So as you can see, uh, the equilibrium price is the price where point demanded equal point supply. Now we want to find the equilibrium quantity. The equilibrium quantity is the quantity that corresponds to the equilibrium price. So now we'll just redo, we plug 15,000 in either the, the, the demand or supply. So we can plug it here or here to find, okay, once we do that, we come up with, uh, you know, uh, if we plug it at the, the, the point demanded, we come up with, uh, of course, uh, you know, 20,000. And if we plug it at the uh, supply, we get also 20,000. Therefore, uh, the point demand equals supply equals 20,000. So the point demand is, is 20,000. Okay, great. Now, at the price of 18,000, will there be a shortage or a surplus? Uh, the best way to, you know, uh, know this, to know whether we have a surplus or a shortage at this price, 18,000, uh, you can just, you know, uh, have a graph and draw the demand and supply. You know, this is the demand, downward sloping. The supply is upward sloping. And then the equilibrium where the demand intersect the supply will give you the equilibrium price. This is the equilibrium price along the vertical axis, 15,000. As you can see, 18,000 is above 15,000. So when the price, you know, at a price above the equilibrium price, we're going to have a surplus or excess supply. At a price below the equilibrium price, below the equilibrium price, then we're going to have excess demand or a shortage. Since the price 18,000 at the price of 18,000, which is above the equilibrium price, therefore we have a surplus. Okay, so we have a surplus. And the, of course, uh, you know, the equation and the, the graph illustrates this. Now, see how much is it? So, to find out the value of the surplus, all we have to do, we calculate the value, the quantity demanded at 18,000 and the quantity supply at 18,000. Of course, because we have a surplus, it means that the quant supply is above the quant demand. As you can see here, the quant supply is above the quant demand. So let's find the quant supply at 18,000 and the quant demand at 18,000 and subtract the quant demand from the quant supply to come up with the, uh, the value of the surplus or the excess supply. So we do this over here, okay? The surplus is the quant supply at price of 18,000 minus the quant demand at the price of 18,000. And we come up with, you know, the quant supply is 50,000. The quant demand is 8,000. So the difference between them, which is the surplus or excess supply, is equal to 42,000. Okay? So the surplus is 42,000. Now, uh, D says, what is the quantity trade? 
the quantity, the, what is the amount that is bought and sold? So when we say the quantity traded, when the question is asking you about the quantity traded, he is actually asking you about what is the quantity that is bought and sold. The quantity, the quantity that is bought and sold is the quantity demanded. You know, in other words, in the market, we have the amount that is put for sale is how much? It's 50,000. However, the amount that is demanded is 8,000. So eventually, how much is it traded? How much is bought and sold is 8,000. This is the amount of the quantity demanded. So it is 8,000. This is the point traded. Okay? It is presented for sale 50,000, and only the, uh, the buyers wants to buy 8,000. So eventually, only 8,000 is bought and sold. This is the quantity traded. Uh, of course, E, will the price remain at 18,000? Remember, at 18,000, we have a surplus. Therefore, the economy or the market is in, in an, a disequilibrium situation. When the market is in a surplus or a shortage, then the market is not in equilibrium. Therefore, because the market is in a surplus, you know, you know, we have excess supply. Then to get rid of that excess supply, the firms or the suppliers or the producers should reduce the price. So once we have the surplus, then the price should, you know, decrease. And when the price decreases, then according to the law of demand, the quantity demanded will increase. And according to the law of supply, the quantity supply will decrease. Therefore, as the price is decreases, uh, as the price, you know, decreases, the quantity demanded increases, the quantity supply decreases, and that will continue until equilibrium is reached. Okay, we're still, uh, you know, uh, going to now solving, uh, of course, problem two. Problem two uh, says, uh, it says that given the following diagram, which shows the demand and supply curves for sunglasses. So we have the problem is about the demand and supply of sunglasses. Now, as you can see, this is the graph. This is the demand curve down sloping. This is supply upward sloping. And the point of intersection between demand and supply, of course, is at the price 60 and the quantity is 450. Now, uh, use the above figure to, of course, to uh, answer the following questions. What is the equilibrium price and the quantity of sunglasses? Usually, when we, when we have a graph and you want to calculate or determine the equilibrium price and the quantity, all we have to do, we look at the point of intersection of demand and supply, and that will give you the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. So here, the point of intersection here. So, so you just a straight line from the point of intersection all the way to the vertical axis, and you see that 60. This 60 is the price. This is the equilibrium price. And then, of course, uh, the equilibrium quantity, we just, uh, you know, draw a line uh, vertical downward to hit the horizontal uh, line, okay, and we come up with 450. So, therefore, the equilibrium price and the quantity are 60 and 450. Now, uh, at what price the market indicates a shortage? Remember, at what price the market indicates a shortage? Of course, a shortage uh, is, you know, uh, uh, we have a shortage whenever the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. Or the shortage is attained whenever the price is lower than the equilibrium price. So this is the equilibrium price 60. So we have to look at any price lower than, than 60. So we have a 30. So at 30, you're going to have a shortage or excess demand. So as you can see, we look 
What is the quantity demanded when the price is 30? It is here. It is, we draw a line, horizontal line, until it hits the demand. It hits over here. We go with, uh, we just draw a line downward to hit, you know, the horizontal line at 750. So this is the quantity demanded. Okay? This is the quantity demanded. Okay? And this is here where it hits the supply. We come up with the quantity supply, 300. So at what the price? The market indicates shortage. Of course, it indicates a shortage at the price below the equilibrium price. The equilibrium price is 60, so at the price equal 30, we have a shortage. Now, uh, of course, uh, what is the value of the shortage? The value of the shortage is the quantity demanded at uh, 30, at the price equal 30, minus the quantity supplied at the price equal 30. And then what we get here, 750 minus 300, and we come up with 450. This is the amount of the shortage. So here we have an excess demand of 450, okay, which is calculated by subtracting the quantity supplied from the quantity demanded at the price equal 30. Now, Part C, what is the quantity traded in the market at that price? At the price equal 30, where we have a shortage, what is the quantity traded? You know, the quantity traded is the quantity that is bought and sold. The quantity that is bought and sold. What is the quantity that is bought and sold when the price equal 30? Of course, the quantity that is bought and sold when the price equal 30 it is 300 because the quantity demand is 750 however the quantity supply is 300 so consumers who would like to purchase the good you know uh, they are they want more than the quantity that is available so basically the quantity that is bought and sold is the quantity that is available is 300. So 300 is the quantity that is bought and sold or the quantity that is traded. Okay? Remember that consumers uh, want to purchase sunglasses only at the price of 30 there exists only 300 sunglasses. However, there are 750 people would like to purchase glasses. So eventually, only 300 glasses will be bought and sold. Great. Now, we go to part D of the equation. It's saying, explain the market mechanism that eliminates the shortage. Remember, whenever we have a shortage, of course, uh, consumers will try to bid up the, you know, the price. Will try to bid up the price uh, in order to, of course, uh, get the good. Okay. So whenever we have a shortage, the price therefore will go up. And whenever the price go up, then the quantity sold will go up according to the law of supply. When the price go up. Producers or sellers would like to increase the quantity that's uh, put for sale. Therefore, uh, eventually, the price will go up, the quantity put for sale will go up, and that will continue until equilibrium is reached or until equilibrium is, you know, attained. Great. Uh, now we move to uh, problem three. Below is the demand and supply for a week in Bika of Lebanon. Bika is uh, an area in uh, east of uh, Lebanon. Of course, uh, it is famous in the growing of a wheat uh, and other uh, goods. Uh, great. This is, as you can see, the demand and supply of a wheat in Bika. Uh, Fill in the blanks in the below statements. It's saying there will be a surplus of wheat. Remember, 
First of all, in order to find out the surplus or the shortage, first of all, look at the equilibrium price at the data. What is the equilibrium price? Okay, now, uh, the, once you uh, determine the equilibrium price, then you look at the price that is below that equilibrium price, and that will give you a shortage. If you are after the surplus, then you look at the price that is above the equilibrium price, and that will give you a surplus. So now we first look at the equilibrium price. What is the equilibrium price over here? It is, of course, 140 here. This is the equilibrium price. Why? Because at this price, 140, the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supply. Therefore, 140 is the equilibrium price. So now we're talking about there will be a surplus. So we have to look at the price that is above 140. What is the price above 140? It is either 160 or 180. So at the price 160 or 180, we're going to have what? A surplus. Now he's saying there will be a surplus of a wheat at any price above the price of 140, which is 160 or 180. It's going to be above 140, greater than 140, so you're going to have a surplus. Now, there will be a shortage of a weight of 300. Okay, when we're talking about shortage, we have to look at the price that is below the equilibrium price, which is below 140. What is, you have 120 below 140. You have 100 below 140, you have 80 below 140. All these prices that are below 140 will give you a shortage. But now he, there's a, a condition here. He's saying that uh, there's a shortage of 300. So which of those three prices above uh, below 140 will give you a 300 occurs tons of a shortage? 300, you know, tons of uh, the amount of a shortage. We we'll look over it. Let's say take 120. 120, we have the quantity demand is 1,200. Uh, the quantity supply is 900. So if you subtract, you know, uh, you know, 900 from 1,200, you come up with 300. So therefore, at the price of 120, we're going to have a shortage, or the value of the shortage is 300. Uh, three, at, at the price of 160, there will be what? At the price of 160, because 160 is above 140, therefore we're going to have a surplus. Simple as that. So at the price of 160, we're going to have a surplus because 160 is above the equilibrium price, which is 140. So in other words, whenever the question is asking you to look for a surplus or a shortage, first of all, if you have the data of values, demand and supplies data, then first of all, locate the equilibrium price. Then any price below the equilibrium price will give you a shortage. And any price above the equilibrium price will give you a surplus. Now we move to problem four. Uh, the pro problem four, uh, of course, says, does each of the following events increase, decrease, or have no effect on the demand or supply of wheat? So we're going to see the following events have any effect on the demand curve, supply curve, or both, okay? Uh, in the short term, what determinant of demand supply has it changed? How will the equilibrium price and the quantity be affected? Okay, so the question asks us, first of all, to see, uh, we have three events. We're going to find out first if each event affects the demand curve, supply curve or both, and then what if it affects the demand curve, what is the effect of this uh, on the demand curve, what is that effect is going to be on the equilibrium price and the quantity, okay? So the first one, event A, the price of corn decreases. The price of corn decreases. And you know that we need to know the effect uh, on the demand also by the wheat. You know that, think of a farmer who is, you know, producing wheat. Suddenly, that farmer, uh, 
here's that the price of corn is going down. So what is the effect of this on the farmer's decision regarding, uh, you know, uh, wheat? Of course, because the farmer can, he, the farmer could easily also produce corn. So once he realizes that the price of corn is going down, so he will continue to produce and plant wheat. Therefore, the supply of a wheat will increase. It will shift to the right. Okay, let's uh, draw this one here to see exactly what is the effect of this on the price, on the equilibrium price and the quantity of a wheat. So if we draw the, uh, you know, the curve like this, this is the demand of a wheat, this is the supply of a wheat, this is the price of a wheat, the quantity of a wheat. Okay, so, and this is the equilibrium price and the quantity here. PE, QE. Okay? Now, because uh, as a result of the decrease in the price of corn, when the price of corn decreases, you know, it's not profitable uh, for the producer to produce any corn. So what he will do, he will continue to produce wheat, assuming that the price of wheat is still the same. So what happens? The, the uh, supply of a wheat will shift to the right. This is supply will shift to the right. So it will shift to the right, okay? The supply of a wheat will increase. That is, it will shift to the right, as you can see over here. What happens as a result of the shift to the right of the supply curve? Of course, the price of a wheat will decrease, okay, and the quantity of a wheat will increase. The quantity of a wheat will increase. So here, as you can see, this has an effect on the supply of a wheat because the price of corn, which is, can be planted, okay, uh, in the same farm, uh, has, uh, you know, uh, uh, experience a decrease in it is a price. <clears throat> the second event is that because of advances in gene splicing, over here we say uh, that implies price of a wheat decreases and quantity of a wheat, uh, you know, increases. Now, the second event because of advances in gene splicing technology, new healthier varieties of wheat are developed. Remember that uh, advances in technology will affect the supply of the good. Therefore, it is a factor of the, uh, or it is a determinant of supply. So once you have an advanced level of technology, that implies it will affect the supply. So the supply curve of a wheat will shift to the right, as you will see over here. So the supply, as we can see, will shift to the right. And that will cause the price to go down and the quantity, of course, to increase. The quantity to increase. So price, uh, of course, decreases and quantity increases. You know, because of the advanced technology, you will expect the supply of a wheat to increase. Now, what about event three? A, a three, event C, a private, of course, research institute announces that people who eat wheat-based food, or who eat uh, wheat-based food have more heart attacks. So now, as a consumer, when you hear that report that uh, wheat-based food will cause uh, you to get a heart attack, then eventually what you will do, you will stop, of course, uh, demanding 
or buying uh, wheat. Therefore, the demand of a wheat will shift to the left. This is actually here. This, this will, this report, of course, this report, will have an effect on the preferences of buyers. So what they will do, they will have a preference against purchasing wheat. Therefore, the demand of wheat will shift to the left. So it just implies demand of wheat will decrease. Now, uh, we show this graphically. We show this graphically. As you can see, this is the price, and this is the quantity, this is the demand, and this is the supply. Of course, this is the equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity here. So what will happen here? The demand of a wheat will decrease. That is, it shifts to the left. This is D0, D1, here as zero. So what will happen here, of course, then you will see the price goes down and the quantity, of course, of wheat will decrease. So price decreases and quantity decreases. Okay? The price decreases and the quantity decreases. This is as a result, of course, of this kind of, uh, you know, uh, report. Now we move to uh, problem number five. Determine the amount of producer surplus generated in each of the following. First, we have to understand what is meant by producer surplus. Producer surplus is the difference between the price received and the minimum selling price. Let me give you an example to illustrate, uh, you know, actually what a producer surplus means. Uh, say, for instance, as, uh, uh, as an owner of a car, uh, you, uh, you are, uh, you know, uh, selling or you are asking uh, for, uh, for the car, you are, you are advertising to sell the car. Uh, the minimum price you are asking for it is $2,000, okay, it's $2,000. However, you have managed to sell the car for $3,000. It's a used car, okay? You are offering it for $2,000. However, you managed to sell it for $3,000. Therefore, the producer surplus is $3,000, the price received, minus the minimum selling price, which is $2,000. Therefore, your producer surplus is three thousand. Let's look over here. Summer list her old Leonel electric trains on eBay. She sets a minimum acceptable price of seventy-five dollars. After five days of bidding, the final high bid is exactly seventy-five dollars. She accepts the bid. Now, what is her producer surplus? Of course, she gets nothing. Because, as you can see, uh, the price she received, of course, uh, is 75. And the acceptable price, the minimum price she is uh, uh, offering the trains for $75. Therefore, uh, you know, producer surplus is zero. So, producer surplus is zero. Okay? Producer surplus is zero. Now, what about the second part? 
Sami advertises her car for sale in the used car section of the student newspaper for $2,000. But he is willing to sell the car for any price higher than $1,500. Okay, the, uh, of course, she advertises her car for $2,000, but uh, he advertises her, his car for $2,000, but he is, of course, willing to sell the car for any price higher than $1,500. The best offer he gets is 1200 which he declines. Of course, as you can see from the question, that his cost is 1500 so he is willing to accept any price above 1500 So now, since the best offer he gets is 1200 which is below the price, the, below the, his cost, therefore, uh, you expect that no trade will take place. No trade. will take place okay because he basically uh, is the best offer that he receives is lower than the cost of the car therefore uh, you know can't expect any sale of the car okay and it is now Hassan likes his job so much that he would like would be willing to do it for free so the cost for Hassan is free. Cost is zero. However, his annual salary is eighty thousand. So he received eighty thousand. So uh, the uh, the producer surplus basically here, producer surplus is going to be equal eighty thousand minus zero, which is equal. 80,000. So the producer surplus for Hassan is 80,000 because actually his cost is zero basically. But however, the, uh, the, the, the money that he received is $80,000. Therefore, the producer surplus is the price uh, uh, received minus the uh, minimum uh, price or minimum selling price, which is basically $80,000. This is the producer surplus of Hassan. Okay, uh, problem number six. Of course, uh, it talks about producer surplus and consumer surplus. However, we're gonna see that the graphic. Uh, below is a graph showing two curves, supply and demand for a granola. Now, as you can see here, what area represents consumer surplus? At P1, the number, uh, Consumer surplus is represented by the area, uh, of course, uh, below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price. So, if we're talking about the price P1, okay, then to find the consumer surplus, it is the area underneath the demand and above the price. So, it's going to be A, B, C, A, B, and C. It is the area underneath the demand and above the price P1. So, we get here A, B, and C, A, B, and C, or is the consumer surplus, or we could add them here. Okay, we can say here, consumer surplus is equal A plus B plus C. Now, what about, what area represent producer surplus at P1? Remember, producer surplus is the area above the supply and below, uh, above the supply, and below the equilibrium price. So if the, if the price is P1, so we have to look at the area that's above the supply and below that price. So it's going to be D and D. As you can see, this is the area. These, uh, you know, uh, figures here, uh, or these uh, yeah, rectangles and triangles, D and E uh, are the areas above the supply and below the, the price. So producer, surplus is going to equal D plus E. Uh, three, what area represents economic surplus at P1? Here we know economic surplus is like total surplus. Okay, uh, economic surplus, economic surplus is the same as total surplus. Okay, total surplus. 
which is equal to the sum of consumer surplus plus producer surplus, which is equal A, you know, uh, plus B, plus C, plus D, A, B, C, D, plus E. Okay? These are A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. It is the, uh, uh, it is the total surplus, which is the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus. Uh, the last part of the question of the problem is what area represents total service at P2? Remember at P2, so the price increases. Whenever the price increases, then the consumer surplus will decrease. So the consumer surplus here is A. It is the area underneath the demand and above the price. The price right now is B2. So P2 is the price. And so the area underneath the demand and above the price is area A. So now we have to look for the producer surplus. It is the area above the supply, of course, and below the demand, below above the supply curve and below the price. The new price is B2. So it's going to be B and D. B and D. So total surplus is going to be equal A plus B plus D. Okay, and this is basically the total surplus when of course the price is P2.